What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the My Gardener channel. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about aggressively pruning your fruit trees. Now, generally, pruning is something that we do every single year to just kind of shape the tree so that it's gonna be better off the next year. It's gonna give more fruit, it's gonna be healthier. There's a variety of reasons why we tend to prune. Um, we also could tend to prune it just to keep it lower to the ground so it's easier to harvest fruit from and manage. But in some cases, every once in a while, a fruit tree will become unmanaged or get out of control. And we've kind of heard this from a variety of different angles. One angle could be you just bought a house that had some unmanaged fruit trees and you wanna put them back in check. Or some, you know, in my case, they just kind of, it was a slow progression where pruning was done, but there was never an aggressive pruning done to really kind of keep things in check. And that's really where we're at. And so um, I've already done this to our peach trees, but we're gonna be doing it to some other trees here in our orchard as well. And you could probably tell a pretty big difference from last year to this year. And the difference is, well, it's on the ground. So like I said, the difference between last year and this year is on the ground. I just took out a ton of growth from our peach trees. Now, our peach trees were in desperate need of some kind of intervention because they were pretty diseased. They've been suffering from peach canker, which is something that will affect all stone fruits um, at some point in their life. Peach canker is just a, it's kind of a, an unwinnable battle, but you can do things to kind of prolong the life of your peach trees. Um, so they've been suffering from peach canker for quite a while and we took out a bunch of the growth that had signs of peach canker on it. And then uh, peach canker, you can kind of see by the different, the, the little lesions that form on the branches. And then ultimately new growth, uh, rather than be nice light green, uh, it actually has more of like reddish spots to it and stuff like that. So we took out a lot of the, the peach canker that was on our branches. And you'll notice there's a lot of flowers, a lot of, a lot of leaves. But the thing is those, a lot of these branches were out of our zone of management. And I call, our zone of, uh, I call our zone of management kind of the area that we can manage with our feet. I don't have to be up on a ladder cutting down new growth or harvesting fruit. I just wanna be able to be on the ground so that I can actively kind of take care of the trees the best way possible. So I took out a lot of the taller growth as well. And this is kind of what I consider to be the kind of a last ditch effort. Anytime you're pruning out this much growth, there's usually something that's gone pretty, dr uh, pretty drastically wrong with your fruit trees. And I'm not ashamed to say it, because obviously here on our channel, I'm all about transparency. Um, these peach trees, they thrive for about the first two years. And then ultimately the location that I planted them in really was not a great spot because of the fact that they're on a hill and peach trees do not like water uh, to be sitting in the soil. They don't like uh, to be waterlogged. And because of that, the peach trees really suffered because of all of the water coming from our neighbor's irrigation system that runs off their hill and right where the peach trees are. And so they've always suffered, always, since basically year two. Uh, the first year they were great, second year they were amazing, and then slowly but surely disease started to set in because of all that excess moisture. And then now we're really trying to kind of just get to a point where they survive, we get some fruit, but you know, we kind of just, uh, kind of just, actively manage them. So uh, we did have to come in and take out a ton of leaves or a ton of foliage. But another question that gets asked is, um, you know, how much, how much can you take off be before it becomes too much? And the answer uh, really is, well, if they're in dying mode and it's kind of do or die, you really can't take out too much. All right, so with these peach trees here, this is our flavor rich peach. And you'll notice that uh, there's lots of growth up above lots of beautiful growth that is kind of up higher, but down below was very diseased. And so what we did was is we aggressively came in here and we pruned, we basically took our, our loppers and we basically took off tons of branches that were just showing no signs of, of health or vitality. And what that's going to do is it's gonna prioritize these little bits of new growth down here. Some even have some flowers, which is a great sign. Um, this growth here, believe it or not, is free of peach canker. That's like a hallelujah moment, because I'll tell you, peach canker is something that you see on new growth that formed last year, but then survived through the winter, and wood fruit this year, still showing, it's still very much a new growth, uh, new growth point, um, like this here. Um, it's nice, it's kind of got a little reddish hue to it, because it survived from last year, that's why there's flowers on it. And then there's all of this kind of, this new growth here that is free of peach canker. 
And that is what we want to establish. We want new growth that's free of peach canker because that's going to get the tree up and growing. It's not going to affect future foliage. And then there's even little, little leafing joints all along here that are showing signs of new growth. And those are going to be future branches. And so we're going to keep some of the upper branches that are still healthy. So that, that's going to generate energy. But at some point, we may also come back and completely cut this off here. We come over here, we might completely cut off this branch over here and just basically top it down to like a six foot tall tree. That may happen at some point. But what we wanna do is we wanna keep as much foliage as possible so that it can generate energy for this new growth that we're trying to kind of foster. And once that new growth has been fostered and it's up and growing, then I'm gonna come in and I probably will at some point come back and chop all this stuff off because a lot of this stuff has some signs of peach canker as well up on these new branches. Now, the nice thing is the fact that peach canker tends to move up the tree. So any growth that's down lower is already kind of out of its range of, of, uh, of where the, spor the spores actually can spread because peach canker is a fungus and it actually kind of, uh, it kind of blows around in the wind. And so this new growth down here is kind of already it's kind of already safe, if you will, because um, any new spores that blow are just going to blow away, unless, of course, there's no wind at all and it just falls straight down onto this onto this uh, new growth here. So um, that's really what we're going to do is kind of just prioritize keeping this upper growth as healthy as possible throughout the growing season and then favoring these little bits of growth to hopefully uh, kind of go into survival mode for next year. Okay, so you saw how drastic it was to prune those peaches back. That was pruning just to kind of encourage new growth and to take out diseased growth, which is usually very drastic. And it's usually done as kind of a worst case scenario, just to, like I said, kind of conserve that energy, hopefully promote new growth and hopefully outgrow the disease and get into some healthier times. Now we're gonna talk about kind of when we prune for shape. So this is kind of a, a first pruning. We've kind of moderately pruned these plum trees and these plum trees are very healthy, very disease free. That's one of the nice things about going with heirloom varieties of, of fruit trees. All of our peaches are kind of hybridized. They're very domesticated. Wouldn't be my first preference, but we went with some good heirloom uh, plum varieties and you can tell they're just so much hardier. And so uh, what we're gonna do, since we've never pruned these before, is we're gonna come in and it's gonna be fairly drastic. We're gonna prune out probably about 30% of the overall foliage in here to really get a good shape. Because what we wanna do is we wanna open up the center of the tree in what's called a goblet. And it's gonna look like a goblet when it's all said and done because all of the growth that's growing into the center of the tree blocks out things like sunlight, prevents good airflow. And so that actually is what makes a tree healthier. Having good sunlight helps reduce things like molds and mildews, uh, as well as uh, algaes and different kind of bark diseases. But then also having good airflow helps to dry out the leaves, helps to dry out uh, you know, the stems and stuff if it rains, keeps it nice and healthy. Um, but then also too, it helps the fruit ripen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're going to basically come right into the center of the tree and we're gonna start to prune. So this branch right here seems like a very beautiful branch to have. However, the problem is it's coming from this side. It's the branch that it's growing on is growing this way. However, this branch is growing this way. And that's what we call a cross-sectional branch. And you really don't want cross-sectional branches because what's, what's happening is uh, this section of the tree is, should be growing this way. And this branch is growing that way. So you're, you have essentially a cross-section there and it's growing on an upward angle too. So it's really intersecting a lot of this lower growth that we wanna favor. We wanna have layers to the trees, but then also not having layers that are overlapping because that's just gonna block airflow and block sunlight. And then when it gets heavy with fruit, it's gonna fall down and you're gonna have these branches underneath that are coming this way, that we want to come this way, intersecting with this branch that really just shouldn't be there. So we're gonna come in here and take all this out too. And there's lots of branches like that on this tree because again, we have never really aggressively pruned this tree yet. But as you can see, this is the goblet that I was talking about. Look at how beautiful the center of this tree is. There's almost no growth coming up through the center of this tree. It's basically just a beautiful little goblet. And I think this tree is gonna be a wonderful example to kind of showcase that. Um, now we also have here a really big branch, this branch and this branch, and there's a branch below it. It forms a Y and Y branches are not strong joints. You want, uh, you want nice 90 degree angles on your trees because 90 degree angles can support really good amounts of fruit. 
Ys tend to break. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here, we're gonna clip this back. And this is a lot of growth that we're taking off, but that's gonna be well worth it in the end. All right, so this is our second plum tree here, and this one's a little bit taller. This one is uh, just a little bit more mature, not quite out of my, my range of management yet. I can still very easily manage most of the branches here, but on these lower branches, you have this beautiful, this beautiful lateral growth here, but then you have some lateral growth that's growing out, and it's really just kind of crossing over some of these other branches here. Now, this tree doesn't have as pretty of a goblet shape. It really, from the very beginning, when it came from the nursery, hadn't been super properly pruned, but I picked it because it had a lot of vigor and it had a lot of great growth points. And so I picked it for kind of a different reason, but in hindsight, I probably would have just gone with two trees that had been properly pruned. So that way I could kind of shape them uh, correctly from the beginning. But uh, so I want to get a lot of this kind of crisscrossy growth out because that's just going to end up blocking air growth or airflow. It's going to really block sunlight and um, it's not super great. But Again, this tree is kind of, it doesn't have a perfect example of a, uh, of a goblet, but at the end of the day, the center of this tree is gonna be nice and open. And so I can still kind of come in here and I can prune this back. This is, you know, a lot of, ooh, it's a nice big one that just came down there. This is another example of just kind of opening the tree up. That was a really good choice to take that one out. But other than that, there's not a tremendous amount that I'd take out because you have the goblet it's a little more sparse of a goblet, but um, it's still gonna give really good fruit production this year, I think. So um, no more on that one. Let's go do the apple trees. That's the last one we're gonna prune up because those ones have never given us fruit and there's a reason why I'm pruning those. All right, so here's our apple trees. Now, these are a summer crisp apple. I've said before that I thoroughly regret planting these. Now that they're here, they've already been in the garden for about six years. I don't wanna just pull them out. I really wanna see it through to get some fruit out of them. But I'm gonna do some stuff that's gonna help us get more fruit. Now, the first thing that's a problem is the apples are always misshapen. And so misshapen apples typically is a cause of what's called the plum curculio. And the plum curculio is a little bit of a, it's a beetle that burrows into, um, into new fruit and actually lives inside the fruit. And a lot of times um, the plum curculio can thrive when there's just too much fruit being set. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna prune out a lot of this growth to just reduce how much this tree can fruit so that it's favoring the fruit that does form. It's gonna allow that fruit to form faster, get larger, and, um, and then it's also gonna be easier for us to spray and manage because we will have to spray these trees organically, but we're gonna spray them and uh, we're gonna use a combination of neem oil, pyrethrum, as well as uh, some sulfur, uh, some wettable sulfur to help kind of keep down things like apple rust and, um, and fire blight. So there we're gonna actually manage this tree much better as well. And um, I think that'll really contribute to some better fruit yields. But as you can see, the tree is not very tall. There's just a ton going on here. And so we're gonna ultimately come in here and I think I'm gonna use this, the saw for this. And this is gonna hurt a little bit, but we're gonna come in here because at the end of the day, I've gotten no fruit in six years. So uh, at this point, I mean, might as well hurt it. Um, <laughs> and we're gonna take, we're gonna take this center branch out, really open the tree up and kind of just cut the tree down by, by about 50% or so, um, or the height of the tree by 50%, I should say. Now, super important to note, I'm cutting on an angle and then that way it reduces water from sitting on top of the branch. So that way uh, it doesn't, cause things like rotten disease. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm really gonna take down some of this other growth here that's just gotten a little bit too, too tall and I wanna be able to manage it easier. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna take out this top branch. Now you'll notice I cut right in between a leaf node. Let's throw it that way. I cut right in between a leaf node so that um, this branch is growing laterally, this branch is growing laterally and I just took out all this vertical growth. So I really cut down on the size so it's easier for me to manage. Same thing over here, you can kind of see this one right here. So what I can do is there's a branch right here and then there's this main branch that's growing up. And I'm gonna stop this from growing up any higher. I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna aggressively prune this back just above, just above that, that branch right there. Now, again, this seems very drastic. 
a lot of people would say, wow, you're really taking the tree behind the shed and just, you know, disposing of it. But honestly, uh, it really needed it. It just was in such bad shape, never gave me fruit. And a lot of that is just because of the plum curculio, which thrives in dormant, you know, dead fruit like that, as well as just having too much fruit on the tree. So this is this again, I think is gonna really improve the odds of us getting fruit this year. And look, so much more open, so much more open, which again is the secret to getting better fruit. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. If you did, make sure to throw a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I know that it's not the prettiest thing to go through and just prune the crap out of a bunch of our trees, but I do know this can be healthier in the long run because of it. And in some cases, it was what saved the tree or, you know, uh, or potentially would have, you know, would have killed it had we not pruned it. So, um, you know, sometimes you gotta do that. But I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel, reminding you to grow bigger. Take care guys, bye.